swabs come in uh, a foil package like this. There's directions on here, expiration dates. They come in a foil package. They have to be refrigerated in order to last for a long time. If they're not refrigerated, uh, they won't work very well. They have an expiration date on them, which is some things I didn't explain to you the other day. So I'm gonna turn on my ATP meter here. And as I did yeah, uh, the, the other day, I have a green microfiber wiper. I have a bottle of plain water. All right. And we're going to use those on this area here. Now this is my lunch table, it's our conference table, but when I'm the only one in here, it's where I also have lunch. So you can see that I'm using the swab as they directed in my four by four area. I went one direction and I'm now going the other. Don't know if you can see it, but I'm turning my hand as I go. I'm then going to put this in here. And what we're doing is we're getting our test space set. Mm. Okay. And now we're going to do this. I'm going to pull this just a little bit closer while that's happening. There you are. Yes. Can you see the numbers? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What does that say? Seven eight five seven. Seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven. Has anybody seen it that high? No. Has there is there anybody on the call that's actually seen this done before? I have not. Oh. I tried well, it on a cutting board once, Dave, and uh, had a real high rating like that. I'm sorry, I just had a big, loud semi go by. What we did, What did you say? I said, yes, I've tried it on a cutting board here at home before and had an extremely high rating like that. Right. And, and why did you see that on the cutting board while you watch what I'm doing? Why did I see it on the cutting board? Because <laughs> I think because the cutting board is coarse, it hadn't been cleaned properly. Uh, you know, other items get uh, tend to be set on a cutting board sometimes if it's exposed, not on a countertop. Well, what you just saw me do is you saw me saturate with water and you also notice it's wet on both sides. There was no splatter, there was no splash, and somebody said something about getting it wet. If I would have not wanted to dry it, I could have really got it wet because the rag would have been, I could saturate that rag with water and make it dripping if I wanted to. But in this case, I didn't want to because this is cleaning. So you notice that I went right through here. I have my control device here. All right. So that's dry now. And I'm going to go through here and do the same thing. Right. That is the cleaning step. So in the cleaning step, this is only about removal. So we said pH and physical removal, correct? That's cleaning. Yeah. If you could mute your mic in the background so that we don't have to, whoever is there, please, thank you. All right, so I shook it for the five seconds. And now we're going to do the count. What we've just done here is we cleaned it. Now you also notice that I went one direction. You notice I flipped it over and I went back over it. That was cleaning. What happens if you leave it on the same side and you go back and forth, you're now taking whatever's on that side and you're smearing it back over. So when you're doing these, if you're going to do a double pass, you flip it over like Daryl said. I've got many sides of the surface that I can work on. What's our number now? 285. Would somebody do the math while I'm doing the next step and tell me how much our percentage of reduction was? <laughs> uh, I mean, I can tell you from 7,000 down to less than 300, 
what would have happened if I would have used a disinfectant on that? Would the disinfectant have killed anything? Nothing, because there's still that soil on there. Thousands of microbial life. Now, this is where I had my lunch. And what I could do now is I can go back to this area and I could take my disinfectant, right? Here's my labeled disinfectant at the proper dilution. Now, there's a couple different choices I could have. I could take my microfiber here and I could squirt this onto my microfiber, right? There's no splash that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. The microfiber now is saturated with the product and I could come through here and wipe the surface. I've now applied the disinfectant to the surface and because I did it that quickly, it's going to take some time for it to dry. Here's the thing. Whenever most of us have been using disinfectant before now, we simply spray it on and we wipe it dry. Now we know it's supposed to sit there wet, but we never let it sit there wet long enough. So the question is, and, and this is just to show you how you use ATP in the process of determining what you're doing. You can see it's drying right in front of our eyes, correct? Yep. And as it dries, we're going to then take a measurement after it dried. Okay, so we saw going from 7,500 down to less than 300. What do you think the count is going to be now? 11. Let's say 50. Well, let's proceed and find out. By the way, if you do not see that moisture when you're using the swabs, what happens is you don't get a good collection. And so at my first class that we did in March, my swabs were old enough and had been in the refrigerator, were out of date. They had all gotten dried up. They gave me some count, but they weren't giving me a true count. So you've got to be very careful when you do this in the field like this. What am I trying to achieve here? I'm not actually trying to shoot for a certain number. I'm actually trying to find out my process. And if using water is the best I can do, or if I use a disinfectant, which tool should I use? What process should I use to achieve the lowest count in my test area? Does everybody understand that? Ninety-six. And wow. So is that good enough?